What's going on everybody? Today's video a little bit different. We're going to be talking about memorabilia cards, relic cards, whatever you want to call them, jersey cards out there. You know, over the past six months, I get a lot of questions. It shows like, hey, are you still actually selling your relic cards, jersey cards, memorabilia cards, whatever you want to call them out there. And the easiest answer is yes, I do still sell them, but some of this stuff is harder to sell. Now, what I keep hearing is, oh, the price on these things are going way, way, way down. Very true. Um, it's going to depend on a lot of things, like I tell people out there. And we'll talk about here in a few. I'll show some examples of stuff and that. But I think it depends on, is it a manufactured patch? Was it just something that Panini threw in there and says, hey, it's, it's some type of jersey piece. It's not player-worn, game-worn. Then you have player-worn, and you have game-worn. Then you have, like, these... One on one bat barrels, one on one bat knobs, and everything like that. So, to me, I think there's a lot that's going to depend on that item out there. And I want to talk just with what I think offhand and what I see. Uh, as always, feel free down in the comment sections to put what your thoughts are, or if you see trends, or whatever it may be. I always enjoy reading them and everything. So, let me flip over here. Let me find the other one. Boom, there we go. So, with it all, I think the more rarity and the older of the item, the better you're going to have a chance in selling it. So, like, example is like a Michael Jordan game, wa game worn jersey or a piece of pants or heck underwear, or whatever it is out there, is going to sell better than one of the newer LeBron Panini, you know, not worn by a player worn and not, you know, game used out there people still buy it but it's not going for the price you'd see a jordan go for or a lebron that is game worn uh, you get a lot of people now asking is that player worn game worn manufacturing you know what is it exactly so i think that's going to be one of your biggest pieces versus your one-on-ones now don't get me wrong there's one-on-ones that are like letter plates out there that do all right i can tell you the tops brand like this with the stamp of approval on where you can go put the little code in and tells you what game it's from does very well, too, because people are all into it. Like, oh, man, that's when he threw a no-hitter. Oh, he hit three home runs that day. Whatever it may be, those seem to be doing a lot better than just a piece of jersey. So you have to really be into it and following, you know, the current trends onto this stuff, which is really hard. I will say it's taken a while to compile a lot of this and really look into it. Because even like NT stuff that's not player worn, like one piece might say it's been player worn or game worn, and the other one just says not from any specific game player or whatever it is. So, or, you know, moment or whatever. So it's really going to depend. So, what I want to talk about first is these manufactured patches. Now, this is kind of a bad example to way because this is an autograph one. So, as you see, this is upper deck, Malkin. Manufactured patch that he autographed on. Then in back, you know, of course, it has a manufactured uh, hockey patch. You get these in all the brands out there anymore, and they just don't sell well. I mean, the nameplate's a little bit different, of course, because people want to spell the whole nameplate out, you know, and stuff like that. Actually, you have collectors out there that will do that. But those there, I know Top's the big one. It puts, like, those all-star, like, medallions and stuff into it. Guys want, like... 20 30 bucks i'm looking on ebay they're selling for like dollar 25 two dollars and stuff i'm like whoa we're way off on prices here you know the guy didn't like wear that or nothing he didn't touch it. none of his dna on it nothing like that so those to me are like your lower tier things minus your letter sets because people are still going to collect those this is all like i said my own general knowledge to look at then you got stuff like this here and i'm going to use these are cvcs that are going out to them uh, the, let me show you, let me see if I can find here. All right. Come on. Game used bat. When people see that, they want to buy it. They know it was game used. It's not player use. So you got to look on the back season. Don't forget on some of the newer tops products and even the older ones, it says here that it's, you know, game used, player used, whatever it may be. But in the back, you might have that general disclaimer like that Panini uses, but their stuff really adheres to that. So just pay attention to stuff like that onto it. I can see why a lot of guys when they're coming to tables are looking, reading, asking those questions because, you know, there's so many options out there now with, I just call them all relics across the board, 
or memorabilia cards across the board because, you know, if you're going to spend the money, you want to get something for your collection that is, you know, one, going to hold value down the road, or if you ever decide to pass it on to your kids or sell it when you retire, whatever your plans are with it, you know, it's going to be there versus, you know, some kind of crazy piece of cloth they stuck in there, and then when it gets cut open, I've seen the videos, and it belongs to another player, you're like, what the crap is this? Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy, I know. Um, the other piece, I don't think I didn't have any with me. And I was looking, I thought I had a couple bat barrels here, but I threw them back in the safety deposit boxes. So when you start looking at bat barrels and bat knobs, of course, your top brands are going to be a little bit higher than Panini, even though both of them people are just going crazy on. It's because they're the rare pieces out there. Now, of course, you know, there's probably 40, 50 Babe Ruth bat knobs probably floating around out there or bat and stuff like that. And then you start looking at like bat. I think there are not too many people do bat barrels anymore, but you might be able to find like 20, 25, you know, total populated like Ken Griffey Jr. bat barrels out there. They're out there, but you're going to pay more money because you're not going to find them all the time. So, the, you know, my thing is people will say, is, is memorabilia cards dead? No, but people are becoming more picky or they're, I guess you could say, being more choosy. <laughs> onto what they really, really want to put their money into. We don't have, like, a big splurge of brand new people coming to the hobby you have to gobble up everything there is. Now is where you got to go back in the old days, like, to, uh, either one, you really, really like the card, or two, you know, hey, are other people really going to like this card to where the value will go up over time? And I don't use dirty word comp. We're going to talk about that probably in a later video this week. Which I think we're going to have a little fun with that video when it comes out. You guys might like it a little bit. But I wanted to touch basis on this. Let me flip back over here once I figure out which scene I had this on. Bad thing when you're recording videos, I have too many different scenes. Oh, there it is. All right, now we're back. So like I was saying, it, it, it really depends. Do I think it's dead? No. But I think you have to have the pieces that everybody's going to want. There's so many Mahomes player-worn relics out there. It's hard to find a game-used one. I've heard they exist. I have not seen one. Um, and then you got now Mahomes stuff that's not from any... It says specific event, game, da da da, da. It's even worse, so it's like it might not even be of that player type deal. Kind of weird how they worded it. I guess that's all their legal aspects on this stuff. And I was trying to find, I don't have anything in the newer stuff that showed it, but I know we did a video on it a while back. But I don't think it's completely dead. I think you're going to start seeing your memorabilia, relic cards, whatever you want to call them, jersey cards. Like the, just the plain jerseys, or even like the with a little pinstripe on those, you know, they'll still be out there for people to get a hold of. But when you start getting those cool pieces, the patches in it that's actually game worn and stuff like that there i think those are we what's going to help drive that part of the hobby itself along with of course like i said you know your vintage pieces onto it they always do well babe ruth jersey pants dimaggio ty cobb jackie robinson all that stuff out there is always going to hold a great value but what's really weird is when you start looking at it your older upper deck stuff, save like Hank Aaron and Willie May, sell for a very small fraction. If somebody took that piece of relic and put in a like an NT flawless card or prism card, this stuff just goes up immensely. It makes no sense out there. Why the older upper deck stuff, which was harder to get, it may be serial numbered out of like 150, 500, or even 999. Here we're pulling relics that don't even have a serial number on it, and people are paying, you know, crazy money still for it because that's just the way we do with the stuff on to it. But you'll look at the stuff that's older from, like, 2005 Sweet Spot or whatever it may be out there, and that stuff's just going for a fraction of the cost of that. And I think I talked about that in one of the videos where I picked up some Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, um, Jackie Robinson relics. I think there was Ty Cobb in there and everything where we were so far off the prices that if this stuff would have been in newer stuff, like within the last three years, it would have been double, triple, quadruple in some cases, the price is on to it. But I don't think it's completely dead and people don't want it. 
I think it's more that they're picking what they do want to spend their hard-earned money on, too. And with all the, you know, some of these boxes sit there and say, you know, like, two relics, one autograph per box, or, you know, inside this pack of obsidian, you get three relics, three autographs. When you start really adding that up, that's a lot of relics out there just for that one thing, and it just starts going way overboard. Where back in the day, you had a set list of the newer players, they threw in some vintage guys, you always had, like, maybe Mantle, Aaron Mays, Babe Ruth, stuff like that every year. But it wasn't a whole lot of them. All right, guys, let me know what you think. I just want to hit my thoughts on this because it's something that's been hitting me for about, I'd say about six months now with people asking me the questions at shows or just, you know, conversation, the passing here and there onto it. I don't think it's completely dead. I think, you know, people are just going to choose and pick what they want to put their money into, just like it is any other sports card out there. All right. That is it for me, guys. I am out. Take care. Have a good one.